The bystander effect is the psychological phenomenon in which an individual is less likely to help a victim when there are more people around. Before reading chapter four, I never knew this was even a thing, but it makes complete sense. In an emergency or stressful situation where someone is in need of help, it is very easy for people to deflect the responsibility of helping that person because there are other people present. They have somewhere to be or they don't know what to do so they think, there's other people around, someone else will definitely help. But when every person at an emergency situation thinks like that, there is no one helping the victim. Social influence is also at play, which is when individuals monitor the behavior of those around them to determine how to act. We've all been guilty of it in some degree, even me. One day I was driving and I saw someone get into an accident. I wanted to pull over and help, but I was late for work and there were so many other cars around. To make myself feel better about not helping, I convinced myself that someone else will definitely help, but I don't know if anyone even did. The bystander effect was popularized by social psychologist John Darley and Bib Ladene after the murder of a young woman named Catherine, or Kitty, Genovese happened in 1964. On March 13th of that year in New York City, Kitty was coming home from work when she was attacked and stabbed outside of her apartment by a, by a man named Winston Mosley. Despite her screams for help, no one in her apartment com complex called the police or came outside to help her during the attack. It wasn't until 20 minutes after the murder that someone finally called the police. When people heard the screams, they probably assumed that everyone in the apartment did too and that someone else would help or call the police. Again, when every person thinks that, there is no one left to help. John Darley and Bib Ladene held experiments to see how long it would take participants to take action and seek help depending on how many people were in a room. They put the participants in either a room alone, a room with two other participants, or in a room with two other people pretending to be participants. They would have the room start to fill with smoke and wait to see what the participants would do. When they were alone, 75% of the participants reported the smoke, but when a participant was with two others, only 38% reported the smoke. For the third group, the two actors pointed out the smoke and then ignored it, causing only 10% of the participants to report the smoke. That third group is a great example of social influence. The participants saw that the fake participants weren't worried about the smoke, so they too weren't worried about it. They also did other experiments and found that 70% of people would help a woman in distress when they were the only witness, compared to only 40% helping when there were other witnesses present. There are two major reasons why the bystander effect happens. One, people don't feel the responsibility to help because there are other people present, so they feel the responsibility is shared among everyone. That means if a bystander has somewhere to be or thinks that they won't be good at helping, they pass on the responsibility to the other bystanders. The other main reason is again, social influence. When there is a situation or someone in need of help and there are multiple witnesses present, they will look to each other to see what to do. This is because most people have never encountered such a situation, so they don't have the experience to guide them through a pressure-filled moment like that, making them rely on others there. If other onlookers don't react, that might make an individual feel that his help is not needed or even appropriate. So social media is a major platform where the bystander effect happens often. This is mainly because people think that with a platform that big, someone else will definitely help or that their voice is so small it won't make a difference. For example, if someone makes a post about committing suicide or a missing child, it is again, very easy for us to scroll past and not send a loving message to that person going through something or not repost that missing child because we're anonymous, hiding behind our phone screens. We think, my one retweet won't help find that child. But if every person who retweeted it thought that, then that child may have never even been found. I think that the best way to stop the bystander effect is to just be aware of it. Next time you're driving and see someone who needs help, pull over. If you're in your apartment and you hear a woman screaming outside, call the police. If we all take steps to be better and help people in need, we can create a better world.